Welcome to this video series on the Tiny2 12-bit analog to digital converter with programmable gain amplifier. This video series will consist of six parts where each part covers one of the assignments in the training Getting Started with Tiny AVR2 Family ADC Hands-On. A link to the training manual, the source code used in the video series and all other videos in the series can be found in the description. The AT Tiny 1627 AVR microcontroller is equipped with high speed integrated analog hardware based core independent peripherals and low power of performance for efficient real time control and sensor node applications. Designed for reliable sensor node applications, require an MCU that can quickly and accurately measure and convert signals in harsh environments while also being power efficient. Featuring a 12-bit differential analog to digital converter and a programmable gain amplifier with up to 16 times gain, AT Tiny 1627 enables measurement of small amplitude signals, reclaiming signals from noisy environments and performing fast conversions of the signal. Now that the introduction is out of the way, let's start with assignment 1. For this walkthrough, I will be using the solutions provided with the assignments to show you the different parts that need to be set up and in the end show you the end result using the data visualizer. So if we start with the ADC file, we have the ADC in it, which you have to fill out according to the specifications in the training. So you have to set up the enable bit, you have to set a prescale on the clock of the ADC, you can set up the reference voltage for the ADC, which in this case is VDD, you have to set up a time base to let the ADC know how long one microsecond is using its internal clock because it uses this for internal timings. In control E you set the sample duration in ADC clock cycles. You can set which kind of trigger you want. So for the first assignment we want to be in free running mode. This means that after each conversion is complete the ADC automatically starts a new conversion. You have to set which kind of input you want for the ADC. As we are doing single conversion we only need to set the positive input and we connect this to A in 5, which is P5, which is connected to the clickboard. In the end, we have to set which kind of mode we want. So for this assignment, we want a single 12-bit mode. That's what we set here. In addition, we have the main function where all the code is running. At the beginning here, you can see several init functions. You have clock init, IO init, ADC init, which we just created, and use that init. These init functions will be with us for the most part throughout the assignments and you can take a look at them yourself but they basically just set up everything else needed for the assignment so the clock speed of the cpu it sets up the gi ports for blinking leds and so forth and it sets up the user communication that we are using to transfer data from the tiny2 to the computer for visualization so in addition to the adc in it we need to do one more thing we need to start the transmission so uh, adc conversion can both be triggered by events or by software and for the first assignment we are just doing it by software so that we just set these bits in the command register and we will start a conversion in the while loop we will constantly check if a new ADC reading is ready if it is ready we will put it into the into the struct and then we will transmit it to the data visualizer so let's flash this over to the tiny2 and see how it looks in a data visualizer so to flash the device you just press Control alt f5 And you can see that the uh, build was successful and it has been flashed onto the device. Then we open the data visualizer. So here's the data visualizer. For every assignment, there's a pre-made configure file that will configure the data visualizer to make the same kind of plots that you see in the assignment manual. To get the pre-configured file, you have to go to load workspace. You have to find the data streamer configuration folder and that folder contains one configuration file per assignment that uses the data visualizer. So we are using assignment 1, so we will load the assignment1.json file. Just press OK. And you can now see that it has created the graphs that we need, but we also need to configure the communication between the tiny2 and the data visualizer. So you should be able to find a 80 tiny 1627 Curiosity Nano, and it should have a COM port here with some kind of number. In our case, it's 18 and here we can configure the board rate used by the UART. So in our case that is 115200 and we will play apply and then play and now the UART communication is working 
but there's no communication between the UART and the data visualizers decoder. So if we go to variable streamers, we will find a decoder here, but it has no source. So we have to go down and select the AT Tiny as the source. And then data should appear. Then we can see that we get some data. Then we can adjust the graph search to something that makes a bit more sense for us. So that will be, say, a minus 100 to about 5,000. Because we know that the maximum value is 4,096. As we can see, the value is down here, but if I go and start pressing the button, we will see that it changes as I press the button because of the way the force click works. So I can make all kinds of stuff. We can also pause and zoom in. And if we zoom in, we see that the signal is more or less perfectly overlapping and this is because we're using the single conversion mode which means that the result register and the sample register are exactly the same there's no difference between sample and result if we only use one single conversion if we go back to the assignment we have the solution for the second part which is the burst mode so the difference between the single and burst is that now we will accumulate a series of samples in the result register and use those. So we have to do some changes to the init file for the ADC. And the changes that we have to make is that we have set the number of samples. So in this case, we want to accumulate a total of 1024 samples. In addition, we have to change the mode from single mode to burst mode to do a burst of accumulated samples. That's all the difference between the single and burst mode. And then we can flash this and go back to the data visualizer, start recording again. And we once again see that the graph moves up and down when I press the button. But one difference now, if I press it really fast and we zoom out to look look at the signal we will see that the signal is now diverging for some of the parts and this is because the accumulated samples lag a bit behind because they are an average of multiple of the samples so it takes longer before they realize that the signal is changing that fast so now we can see that there's a difference between the result and the sample register that's it for assignment one thanks for tuning in